Hey, hey, poker peeps. Thanks for tuning in. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. So this is an educational commentary. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about two specific things that you must start doing in your very next session and every session to be on that's going to help you make better decisions. Guaranteed. What I've got going on here is one table of blitz poker. This is ACR's version of Zoom, you know, fast fold poker. And the reason I'm playing this, normally I don't play this. I like regular tables because I like knowing always who's on my left, who's on my right, instead of having it constantly a revolving table of players, right? But um, so I'm playing this so that we can get a lot of hands and maybe get into some interesting spots to discuss as we discuss the two important topics for this video. Um, so I won't be hitting, oh, maybe hit fold now occasionally. And sometimes I'll hit fold and stay if I want to discuss something, right? Ah, queen 10 suited, pretty decent spot to open raise. You can see I do not know anything about this player. Um, they have less than the normal full 120 big blind starting stack. Queen 10, definitely good enough to open raise. Nice. So the very first thing uh, that you've, you're going to do in your, in your next session is you're going to constantly ask and answer the question... What are they doing this with? This is a critical question. Anytime you face a bet, a limp, a raise, uh, somebody check raises you on the turn, whatever it is, that is the most important question. Now, the reason why this question is important is because in order to answer it, you have to think about their pre-flop range of hands. So the range of hands they entered with, whether they were the open raise or the three bet or the limper, doesn't matter. Everyone has a different range based on position and action pre-flop, right? What are they doing this with forces you to think about their range. And then on the flop, the turn, or river, at whichever point you're asking yourself this question, well, you've got to think about how their range interacts with the board. You also have to think about their actions on the prior streets. So if you face a triple barrel, they bet the flop, the turn, and then now the river. And then you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I just have a top pair weak kicker. Oh, can they be betting anything worse? Can I call here? Well, your very first question, not can I call. A better question is what are they doing this with? And then if you reason to yourself logically, well, I know that this person loves to bluff a lot and they could triple barrel bluff with an ace high and I have a hand that beats those ace highs, especially with those three hearts on the board. Maybe he had the ace of hearts. You know, that's possible. If that's your reasoning, totally make the call, right? But that is the most important thing you're going to do from this point forward. What are they doing this with? So Ritmo right here should have been asking when uh, whatever that player was, whenever he made that almost 4x raise, um, he should be asking, wow, what are they doing this with on this board at this time with their range, with that bet sizing, all this kind of stuff. Nice. So what are they doing this with? Well, 34-12, kind of a loose passive but they, they open race kind of like a tight aggressive player so they have a cutoff range maybe a 20 percent range i can definitely call here we're getting enough uh pot odds to set mine hopefully hit a set we don't hit the set so we're just going to check this person c bets 50 percent. if they do not c bet they do not have an ace and there's a good chance that i can bet and take it away so let's see what they do here if they check the question is what are they doing this with what are they checking with well they're checking with all their under pairs oh nice so I am going to attempt 4.5 into 7.2, taking it away. Because if I ask that question, what are they doing this with? Uh, sure, they have some kings that just now hit a pair that they might be willing to call with. Uh, look at that board. Look how ugly that is. So many straights available. There's trip jacks. He's slow playing. You know, what is he calling with on that turn? He's calling with so much stuff. I just, I beat bluffs, right? I beat a pair of sixes, but why would he call with that? I don't think I can get him to fold anything, especially when that turn completes another draw. I'd have to bet really big to represent a queen, and I kind of I think it's going to be hard to do. So just check in there. Uh, hopefully, he just had a couple of spades, you know, eight, nine of spades. Now he's betting half pot. I'm just going to fold. What are they doing this with? He's got at least a king, potentially a queen that just now rivered uh, the gutter uh, for the straight. So I'm just going to fold that hand. But what are they doing this with is critical. Now, to help you answer this question, you always want to think about their statistics. Now, if you're an online player, you should be using a HUD heads up display like I got here, right? So um, wait for the next hand to pop up so we see some fresh HUDs. Perfect. So on this table right here, this is a tight aggressive player as a 1917. That is your first key looking at their stats, tells you the type of player they are. Then you understand how they generally approach and play different hands. 
Uh, so stats help you out a lot. If your opponent decided to, uh, let's say this, they decided to check raise you on the flop. Well, this player folds to C-bets 52% of the time on the flop. So they're kind of flop honest, but their check raise probably indicates some real strength. So you can use the stats in or that directly relate to how they or to the play that they made. That'll help you figure out what they're doing this with. And the critical thing is with this question, you're always asking it and answering it before you click fold, call, bet, or raise. Always think about it before you make your decision. Now, tendencies is another thing. Maybe you've seen uh, a player uh, three bet bluff with six, seven suited, ace, four suited, uh, jack, eight suited. You've seen them do it once before. Well, if you've seen them do it with that kind of stuff before, the three betting again, there's a good chance they could be doing that again, especially if it looks like a good situation to try to three bet bluff you. So take those tendencies into account to help you answer the question. Next is position. So if we take a look at any stat, let's take old timer right here, 26 slash six. So his raising is really small at 6%, right? Let's take a look at by position where he's raising first in. Well, it's interesting. In the small blind, 18%, it is, uh, it's only two out of 11. In the EP at 9%, probably one out of, oh, three out of 33, interesting. So we can look at by position to get a gauge of what he's doing. When it comes to uh, C bets here, ah, I don't have any good stats on anybody. Uh, oh, well, let, let's look at uh, old timer here. He doesn't raise that often, so he C bets 100%. Two out of two, and they were both in position. We haven't, oh, one in position, one out of position. That's pretty indicative that when he gets to the flop as a pre-flop racer, he's probably going to C bet. So we can be prepared for that ahead of time. Fold now, move on to the next hand. Uh, oh, ace nine, I could probably defend, possibly even three bet defend, depending on who the open raiser is. Oh, loose aggressive player coming in. What is his uh, SB? 100% out of the SB, one out of one. Let's definitely come in with a three bet here. Most of the time, we're going to expect him to fold right here. He's out of position. We're making a big size. He's got a really wide range, and he folded. Nice. So what are they doing th this with? The answer was a wide range. So bet sizing is critical. He made that just then, um, uh, 2.5 big blinds. If he had raised it 3, 3.5, 4 big blinds, I might put a little bit more seriousness into his raise. Instead of trying to steal at just 2.5, um, a bigger raise could have indicated, hey, I have a strong hand. You're in position in the big blind. If you're going to call me, you're going to be, uh, you're going to have to pay for that positional advantage. That could have been his whole deal right there. Um, loose aggressive player, but kind of on the almost tight aggressive side. I'm going to give him the orange color coding as a loose aggressive player. But here, um, ace five suited is often a three bet bluffing hand, but I'm just not going to do it this time. It is ace five off after all. Plus I'm out of position and he so far 0% folding to three bets. Nah, not going to try it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, stack size is another important. Oh, taking my three bet away. Great, so this is an interesting time. Even though we're not involved in the hand, I'm gonna fold and stay. What are they doing this with? Well, he's making it 10 big blinds, practically. A large bet from a loose aggressive player who three bets at 11%. Let's see what their three bet is out of the MP. Oh, only 8.3. Not too often at all, so this is maybe on the tighter side of things. Maybe pocket tens are better, ace queen are better. Possibly ace jack or ace 10 suited as well. He checked behind. He does have aces, kings, or queens. There's no reason to check behind with such a strong hand on a hard-to-hit queen three board on that flop. So what is he doing this with? Uh, I think now he has, I don't know, pocket jacks, ace, queen, could be doing it. Um, although I don't I don't see why ace, queen would check behind. Uh, I think burgundy right here, what is he doing it with? He's got that top pair of a queen, and he put him to the test, check raising this loose, aggressive player. I think we're going to see a queen or better, I should say. Could easily be a set of tens that he got lucky to flop that on the turn. Uh, flop it on the turn. Hit it on the turn. But he's folding right now. He doesn't like his hand at all. That was a total bluff. Almost a full pot size bet. 90% pot, roughly. Oh, King Jack. Open ender hit his set of tens. Yep. So that was interesting. So like I said, I just voiced the reasons, right? Or vo voiced their hands. His hand for that large raise was a set of tens, and it, it really felt like he got lucky to hit that on the turn. And that he, like I said, he was probably bluffing right now, didn't have that strong of a hand. He didn't have aces, kings, or queens. Uh, 
and King Jack totally makes sense. Big bet like that. I don't like his play of uh, uh, going with just an open and a straight draw, though. No flush draw with it or anything. And he was well behind his pocket tens right there. Set of tens, I guess you could say. But stack size is important. So if we look around the table, in Blitz, 120 big blinds is the starting stack size. This player only has 81. 81 big blinds. So there's a good chance that they're more on the recreational side of things, right? They don't exactly uh, want to risk a lot of chips. They come in with a smaller stack size and their goal is to build it up, to double up or something like that. Oftentimes those smaller stacks indicate weaker players. Now, another thing, people who always top their stack off back at 120, that indicates a reg player, someone who knows what they're doing, most likely tight aggressive or loose aggressive. Now, if you ever see somebody with a humongo stack, which we don't have. We have 186 big blinds here. But sometimes, especially in blitz or zoom games, you get 300, 400 big blind stacks. Pay attention to them because sometimes you may have heard, if you're thinking about blackjack or craps or something in casinos, you may have heard people talk about playing with house money. Well, house money means, hey, I'm up so I can take bigger risks and gambles with this money. So if you see a loose aggressive player, 41, 30, 22, maybe not 22, 19, he's pretty tight. This player uses a HUD. They know what they're doing here. They see bet only 31% of the time, which means that they are just pretty flop honest. Anyway, getting off track here. If this player had a huge stack, 300, 400 big blinds, I'm going to plan on them pushing me around, pushing everybody else around on the table. Because like I said, they're playing with house money. They're going to take big risks with bluffs, big risks by calling weak draws like gut shots and ace high over cards. They're going to call that kind of stuff. So if they are, so you just have to, I guess, expect them to get aggressive with some weaker hands uh, in order to try to hit a big hand to keep building that stack, right? Uh, oh, just checking here. Get to see a free nothing flop. A couple of broadways. I'm not going to contest it. Look at that short stacker right here. Very loose passive player. I could, and I should, and I will green him up. There we go, which indicates a loose passive player. All right, so that's how I use some, some stack size indications to help me uh, gauge what are they doing this with. And I didn't ask that question, what is he doing this with on this board? It could have easily been a king or a queen. But, I mean, also, I just I was in the big blind. I could add anything. He could have just been betting to get me to fold, even though he's such a loose passive player. All right, what is this? Oh, that's right, image and other relevant items. So you're playing at these tables. Um, most likely, if it's blitz, you don't really develop that much of an image unless I've seen Jay Shum on five different hands in this session uh, lose a ton of chips, and now they're suddenly getting aggressive. They could be tilting, right? But the image and other relevant uh, items could be when you're playing at a regular table and you see somebody is constantly getting stacked, but they keep topping off and they're gradually getting more and more aggressive or they just keep three bet shoving because they want to win those chips backs. So pay attention to their image and what they've got going on, possibly their mental state, um, to kind of help you answer that question. What are they doing this with? Now, the other thing, other relevant items, well, that's pretty... That, uh, I guess other relevant items could be a big part of tournament play or sit and go play. When you're on the bubble, that's gonna affect players' decisions. So what are they doing this with? A three bet shove with 20 big blinds on the bubble? There's a good chance they just wanna take this down right now. They have an ace and they hope their ace is a blocker to take the pot away from you. Or if you know the player and they only shove with good hands, they're on the bubble, they've got aces or kings, right? Uh, um, oh, interesting. Well, I'm just gonna defend right here. Call, he is, he C bets uh, 71%. So what I'm thinking is I can call most C bets on the flop. And as soon as he checks the turn, um, I can definitely fire. So I'm going to time down a little bit and then call. So what is he doing this with? He could have been bluffing that flop with a lot of different cards. Ace highs, pocket fours, stuff like that that I'm ahead of. Now that 10 hits, he's not going to like seeing the 10 because I could have easily hit uh, my draw. So I'm going to come out firing. So what is he doing this with? When he's checking, like I said, he doesn't like it. Uh, good chance to steal the pot fold and stay so I can keep talking. Now, the last thing, and we haven't gotten into in this hand or on this table, any big hands like this, but the last thing is remove your hand from your mouse for big decisions here. So, well, oh, see what my next hand is. Okay, good, I'll fold and stay. So what I'm talking about is, you know the situations that potentially set you on tilt or when there's a lot of 
chips at risk. You, you're dealt pocket aces. Let's say they're the two black aces, spades and clubs. And the flop comes down with three hearts. King, queen, seven of hearts. Holy cow, all you have is a pair of aces, which can be good, but there's so much stuff that you gotta fade, right? There's just the one more heart. There's the jack. Possibly an ace gives your opponent a straight. Um, uh, uh, a 10 gives queen 10 two pair, which beats your aces. I mean, there's so many things that while your hand is strong right now and it was the best hand pre-flop, there's a good chance it will be beat eventually by the river and you might end up losing a lot of chips. So whenever you're in a spot like that, you know, your mouse is right here, take your hand off your mouse and then take the time, think about your decision, ask the question, what are they doing this with? And then when you come up with a good answer to that question, that's when you go ahead and make your play. So what is this player doing this with? Well, kind of a loose, kind of aggressive player, wide range in the MP, maybe not as wide as the cutoff or the button, but I think right there with my ace and the king, I block pocket aces, pocket kings, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack. I block a lot of hands that he could be calling me with. So my bluff is likely to work. And if he does decide to call with the king, queen, the ace, queen, the ace, jack, um, uh, the pocket tens, my ace, king has really good equity against that calling range as well. So I think that was a good opportunity to three bet bluff. And at the same time, he's probably capable of calling with worse hands. All right, so those are the two things. This is something you're gonna have to practice on the felt asking and answering this question because a lot of us, what we do is we see our hand, oh, seven deuce, hey, it's suited, I should call. But we don't think about the type of player that we're up against. We don't think about their tendencies, the position, the bet size, um, their stack, or even the image. We just see our hand, king jack suited, that's always worth calling, click call. No, 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 you're not gonna do that anymore. You're gonna be working on making better decisions by asking and answering, what are they doing this with? And then of course, remove your hand from your mouse for big decisions to give your brain a little bit more time so that your emotions don't uh, uh, hijack your trigger finger. All right, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little instructional uh, uh, video and take care and good luck the next time you are on the felt. Later.